day and welcome to Euracle's YouTube channel. Today marks an important day within the HVAC and R industry, as today we are celebrating World Refrigeration Day. We will be looking in how the HVAC and R industry has impacted, impacted the world. With me, I have Gavin Wiffen, Philip Tienesse, Johan Dalpur, Johan van Breda, and Rodney Taylor. Would you guys please be so kind as to introduce yourself to the viewers and just give a little bit of a background as what impact you have within your goal. Gavin, we can start with you. Hi, yes, my name is Gavin Whippen. I'm the regional manager for you in Cape Town. And um, we look after the Western Cape and the other Cape provinces. Philip? Hi, my name is Philip Tennyson. I'm the HVAC manager, and my responsibility is to move uh, uh, HVAC within the Eurocool company. We specialize in green. Johan Dalpur? Hi, I'm Johan Dalpur, the branch manager of Eurocool Bloemfontein. I've been in the also cell industry since 1991. And I've got a, a huge um, engineering background, so I'm doing a lot of engineering for the um, refrigeration market in the free state. Johan van Breda. Hi, Gray. My name is Johan van Breda. I'm the national product manager in Eurocool. Uh, my responsibility is to look after the Eurocool stock portfolio, and I've got 27 years um, industry experience. Rodney Taylor. I am Rodney Taylor. I'm the MD of Eurocool, and I've been in this industry since 1996. So in our discussion, we will be discussing a few topics as to how the HVAC industry has impacted the world. And my first question for you guys are, how does the HVAC and our industry play a role within regards to the food preservation of South Africa and the world. We can start with Johan Dalport. Yes, thank you, Deirdre. I, I'll just say to Philip that um, in a free state, I actually uh, store a lot of uh, seed potatoes uh, that, that they keep for a, a long period of time and then they plant it when, it, when, it, when the season is hot. The other thing that they do is they also keep a lot of bananas um, in the market. Uh, they, they've been plucked um, green, uh, or, um, not ripened yet. And then when the market is ready, they introduce a chemical to them uh, and, and it ripens and then they can sell it. Um, then we've got a lot of meat uh, pre 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 uh, preservation um, with a lot of abattoirs. We almost like the, the meat basket of South Africa here in, in the free state. So yes, that, that's, that's some of the food that we have, uh, that we have here in, in the free state area. And Gavin, Dave, with you in the Cape Town? Hi, um, obviously on the coast, like, like in Cape Town, uh, the fishing industry, for instance, is very, very important. Um, we in Cape Town have a huge uh, fishing fleet and, you know, these fleets go out to sea and they catch the fish out there. Uh, they start immediately to, to preserve the fish and uh, put them into huge fleets on the ships um, so that the cold chain is, is not broken, you know. They bring those fish back to the harbour, they unpack them, uh, they put the packages straight to the supermarket and the cold chain lasts all the way through there until it gets to your fridge and, and then you have a lovely meal. So, yeah, that's very important for, for all aspects uh, of, of the refrigeration industry. Wow, that's very, very interesting to know that not just do our industry provide parts for refrigeration in your normal household, but also in how when you, as you said, when they go out and fish, how they keep the, fr the fish cold and fresh until it comes to you in your own personal fridge. Yeah. And Deirdre, I think also to add there, there's been quite a lot of technology advances in terms of temperature control 
within supermarket fridges and cold storage, which by controlling the temperature accurately, you extend the shelf life of products in the supermarkets and in the shops significantly, which obviously reduces overall food wastage. Very true. <laughs> Our next question that we have, and right now I'm going to start with you, is would you say that the HVAC and R industry also plays a crucial role in regards to medical supply preservation, such as the current COVID-19 vaccines? Uh, Deirdre, yes, without a doubt. Um, the cold chain is just as important as in the food industry because a lot of these drugs have to be stored in temperature controlled environments. So if at any stage from the manufacturer until you get it in your hands, that, that cold chain is, is broken, it compromises the quality of the drug and obviously its efficacy in terms of the person who's taking it. So it's, it's absolutely critical. And we know for a fact that a lot of these COVID vaccines need to be stored at certain temperatures. Some of them are quite extreme, um, but again, without the cold chain in place, most of these drugs, you'll have to throw them away if uh, they, they reach you having broken their cold chain. Johan van Breda, do you have anything to add to that? Hi, um, I think it's a bit difficult to add to that. I think Rodney has summed it up very well. Um, you know, I can just also just highlight the fact that, you know, the cold chain is, is of utmost importance to, uh, to any vaccine or to most of the vaccines um, currently available. Philip, a question for you. <laughs> Does climate sure. control assist in work environment, such as hospitals, pharmaceutical development, and our everyday lives? Uh, the other way, okay, so uh, to get back to the reason why uh, air conditioning was developed, it was basically developed to bring down temperature, uh, then humidity, and then one of the benefits was always air filtration uh, as well. Um, you know, from, from uh, we can look at the... Um, Pharmaceutical industry, for instance, apart from the cell phone for me. Can you start the shutdown? Sorry, we've got a feed here. Apart from the cold chain, you know, with the um, vaccines, etc. If you go into a normal pharmacy or a medical facility where uh, stuff is out uh, and kept, um, you know, even if it's a box of panados that's in a you know in a pharmacy, it's it's got to be be like below twenty five degrees. You also get uh, in your shops, you get the chocolates that can melt if the shop is very hot inside. But yeah, um, comfort cooling is the most important thing or the most used uh, uh, application for human comfort to bring down temperature, to increase temperature uh, uh, or bring down humidity and air filtration, obviously with its benefits that I will talk about later. But then you get, then you get the pharmaceuticals, uh, the products, as I said, and then uh, 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 applications like um, your electronic equipment, uh, server rooms, uh, uh, where the equipment has to be held below a certain um, temperature, um, server rooms and that, that, that sort of application where it also comes in um, as a benefit. Okay, so not only do you purchase a aircon for your home, but aircons and climate control is used in almost our everyday lives wherever we go. Wherever we go, the other way, basically, if you um, sleep at night, uh, it could either be very hot and, and you need to bring the temperature down because you need to sleep. Um, you can close the doors and the windows for security purposes, that sort of thing. And then when you get up, there's an air conditioner in your car. It might be very hot, very cold. You use it either in cooling or heating. Then you get to work, uh, get to your office. Um, you either you put it on to treat the, uh, the, the indoor temperature there uh, so that you can put in productive days of work. Um, if you work in a place where it's 35, 38 degrees, you, you're not going to get much productivity out of yourself. 
uh, also when it's minus five and you're sitting in your office freezing um, and and that's of a huge benefit so yeah from from your work environment right through to 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 home environment it's it's very beneficial thank you fella again Sorry, if i can just interrupt maybe um, no i don't know if you're aware but uh, climate control is also used for pest control Oh, okay. So basically what they do is within, um, let's for argument say a butchery, they have what we call a, a drop temperature area. It's an area where they actually, um, it's a meat processing area and they actually cool that temperature and um, just by cooling that the ambient temperature within that room, um, they manage to actually reduce the amount of flies or totally get rid of all the flies and, and also, you know, just extending the, the shelf life by holding the food uh, the, the cold chain. Thank you, Johan. That's very, very interesting to know. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a further uh, application, particularly for comfort cooling, and that is for employees and workers that work in really adverse environments. And um, one particular example is in foundries where workers are working around furnaces that are running at extremely high temperatures. Um, a lot of them wear a kind of a vest, which is cooled via a uh, cold air feed. And this extends their productivity significantly before they have to leave and don't get heat stroke from working in those environments. And obviously we know for a fact that particularly in the South African environment, in our very deep gold mines, temperatures are excessive and those companies invest significantly in cooling um, for those miners underground. Otherwise, they will not last a full shift of work. They will get heat stroke. So it's pretty critical in a lot of working environments as well. And Rodney, uh, could you perhaps explain to our viewers what type of job opportunities the HVAC and our industry creates? There's obviously the traditional kind of uh, refrigeration mechanic or air conditioning service technician role, which probably most consumers would know because that's the guy that you call to your house when your aircon stops working or that you run into in the supermarket while he's fixing the fridges. But obviously behind the scenes, there's a lot more development that goes on. There's a lot of opportunities related to the logistics of shipping air conditioning and refrigeration components around the world. And obviously in the manufacturing facilities where a lot of these components and, and the equipment is made. So, um, you know, around the peripheral of all of that, you need financial people that are running these companies and handling the finances and the cash flows and all of these good things. So, the opportunities are incredibly broad in this industry. Thank you, Rodney. Does anybody else have something to add as to how the HVAC and our industry impacts the world? Yeah, basically, one example is you get a product uh, that is. Uh, Produced in South Africa, for instance, grapes, uh, oranges, etc. And there's refrigeration, mostly refrigeration used in, in, in the preserving of that um, um, product. It gets loaded into a container, which is refrigerated. It's, it's, it's put on a ship. Ship can take three to four weeks going into Europe. Uh, that product gets to the other side still fresh. Um, it gets offloaded into a different truck. That truck is refrigerated, gets into um, the storage facility, which is also refrigerated. Uh, if it's meat, like Johan said, then it's taken from full freezer room at minus 30 to a normal cold room, like minus, uh, well, four degrees or so, and then into a drop temp area where air conditioning sometimes take, take over, where you're looking at 12 degrees uh, around there. Um, wine as well, wine cellars and these also work at 12 degrees and then it's, it's, it's brought into the shop area where you've got your fridges and, uh, and, and so on and, and, uh, but in the serving area you've got, you got an aircon um, uh, in that area to also keep down the temperature and make it uh, accessible 
for customers to walk around, uh, etc., in comfort. So it really is a, a, a va vast application uh, for refrigeration and air conditioning. To give you one example. Thank you, Philip. Anybody else? If I may just say, um, um, we all forget about this whole COVID epidemic that, um, that, that people who follow diet needs to be keep kept cool, cold until they can be buried. Uh, I even know about a facility in, in Bloemfontein that even froze the corpses for a while if, if uh, nobody, not, none of the family come and, and, and collect them. So that also plays a part in the world, um, even on the, on the bad side of the COVID epidemic. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining in us in this insightful discussion about how the HVAC and our industry impacts the world. For more discussions like this one, remember to subscribe, like, and share. Stay safe, stay warm, stay healthy. Mm -hmm.